Brian Smith, publisher of Inside the Nights on Fan Nation, powered by Sports Illustrated. And here's a question for college football fans, especially those who follow recruiting. Should the recruiting rankings now be changed? What do I mean by this? Should they be changed based on transfers, with players now being able to immediately be eligible when they leave one school, let's say they go from Illinois to Iowa State, whatever it may be, that impacts the roster. Well, isn't that what recruiting is? But if you take a look at all the different programs around the country, how many transfers they take, they are not necessarily ranked by what they receive. Meaning if they took a lot of transfers, their ranking wasn't the same as a program like Oregon who took no transfer for the class of 21. They signed 23 high school players. Fair enough, that's their prerogative. Nothing wrong with that, it's very traditional. But if you're a program that's like UCF, that's different. They signed over 10 transfers. Didn't take as many high school players as they could have, but those transfers are going to make a major difference. If you look at some of the different pro, uh, different companies that do the rankings, it's very difficult to understand what they're doing because you can see what they were ranked as a high school recruit, but if a kid is two, three, four years down the road, did they really rank them correctly? Did they go through it? By diving into it, not all of them did, and some don't even list the transfers, like rivals. If you go to the recruiting class or any school, it doesn't list those transfers. How is that really a good analysis? Moving forward, I know that myself and anybody that helps me with rankings for UCF, for anybody else that I'm associated with, with Sports Illustrated, any rankings that we do of a recruiting class, it could be Miami to Washington, Boston College to New Mexico, you have to take the time and dive into which players transfer in and out of those programs. If you don't, it's not a complete analysis and therefore it's not a very good ranking. It's just something to think about because certain programs and how they're perceived is changed because quite frankly, people aren't doing their jobs to the fullest degree. Now this will probably kind of go uptick a little bit here, a little bit there each year, but I'm gonna dive right into it in December. That's the first national signing day. There's no reason not to. Further, you can use just two or three, let's say a school gets six transfers. If it's Indiana, if it's Texas, whatever school, if they have two or three guys that are obvious, that are really good transfers, they played at Alabama, they played at Florida State, whatever, they're transferring as a graduate or as an underclassman, you need to talk about those players just as much as a player that's a big time high school running back, defensive end, or et cetera. With that thought in mind, please note that rankings are not exactly what you think, especially for the class of 2021, as the evaluations were not fully done. This is Brian Smith, publisher for Inside the Nights. Have a great day.